Welcome to episode number six and I was reading some internet forums today and it suddenly occurred to me that the subject of CTCSS tones is very misunderstood and reading some of the sort of things that people have posted online it's quite clear that the people who are asking the questions get quite decent answers but misunderstand so I figured if we can try and sort that one out all well and good. I've got a whole bunch of radios here and the the common feature on them is that they only use one frequency. So all these radios um, share a common simplex channel. But the snag is the team of people who use them don't want to be annoyed by people that have got nothing to do with them. In actual fact, this is actually an entertainment venue's radios. And what we've actually got are lighting people and we've got stage management people. So they think that they've got a number of separate radio channels. Well, in actual fact, they haven't. They're actually sharing one. But a lights person does not want to be annoyed by somebody passing a message about scenery. So what they do to make this happen is channel one on this radio is programmed with one CTCSS tone. Continuous tone controlled squelch system. This is the thing we've got to try and get our head around. Continuous tone controlled squelch system. Well, squelch. OK, let's start with that. That's that horrible white noise that you hear when you're listening to a radio uh, and it's in between the transmissions. You hear that horrible <coughs> noise. It's white noise. And you turn up the, uh, the knob labeled squelch until a point when that noise is silenced. And basically, your radio will look for signals that are stronger than that noise. And if it hears something that's stronger than the noise, the gate opens and you hear the transmission. If it's very close to that level where the gate closes, then you're going to get a bit of a choppy signal or you're going to get an awful lot of noise on it. But in general, if the signal is loud enough, it comes through loud and clear. That's the principle. And anything will open that gate. So in this particular example, if we were using ordinary squelch, then when the lighting people press their button and talk, all the people who've got stage management radios would hear that message. Um, the downside to that is, well, one, it's pretty annoying because it, you know, it doesn't actually relate to what you're probably doing. But the other thing is the people who are waiting for a message have to listen to more than they need to to work out whether it's actually meant for them. Because with the best will in the world, uh, a voice comes out and says, are you ready? Well, nobody quite knows. Are you ready for what? Is that, uh, am I ready? Or is that meant for somebody else? So it does get a bit confusing. So in this particular case, channel one is set to have a tone of 67 hertz. And channel two is set to have a tone of 98 hertz. Now, don't get those confused with the transmit and receive frequencies. So in this particular case, we're up in the 450s for the actual frequency. So for 450 and a bit megahertz is where these things are working. So that's their transmit and receive frequency. The tones we're talking about, the frequency of those is in hertz, not megahertz, not kilohertz, ordinary hertz. So 67 hertz right down the bottom end on a piano very low tone which you don't really notice so with a radio set to one if i press the button on here one two three four five five four three two one so in this particular case all the radios that are set to tech one will respond um, if i now turn this radio here it's now showing tech two same frequency of transmit. So now I've got that radio on tech one. This radio is on tech two. And when I press the button, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, nothing happens. Now that's receiving on the same frequency this is transmitting on. But it's looking for 98 hertz as a tone hidden below where the voice is. And it's not getting it because the radio is sending it on 67. So if I turn this to this to one, 
one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. That works. Um, normal operation. If I talk on this one, one, two, turn it up a bit. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. So those two radios are talking together on tech one. If I turn this one to tech two, <laughs> silence. The two radios, to all intents and purposes, could be on different frequencies, but they're not. They're sharing. Now that's the crucial bit about using tones. It doesn't prevent your radio sending anything. Your radio is quite happy to send that. It just doesn't hear anything. Now, the killer for this is quite an important factor. Okay, we've got two radios. Let's say they're both on the Tech 1 channel. If somebody talks on Tech 2, you don't hear it. But there's still conversation going on, which means that if you now need to talk and press the button, you're going to probably obliterate the people who are talking on the other channel that you're not aware of. So that's one disadvantage of CTCSS. So that's where CTCSS falls down a little bit. It gives the illusion that you've got a private system and it is always going to work. But you're not privy to the fact that somebody else is having a bit of a sort of chat about something else on exactly the same frequency. You're just not hearing it. Um, the downside for using these for people like lighting and stage management, of course, is that if there's going to be a problem, they usually happen at the same time. So if the scenery is about to fall down and there are two people having a heated discussion about who's going to hold on to it, um, and then the lighting people want to tell people to do things, it breaks down. And that's where you need to have dedicated different frequencies. So that's the critical thing. If it makes sense now, CTCSS is a gatekeeping system. And unless the person that is calling you uses the tone your radio expects, you don't hear them. But it's not private. So it does mean that, uh, for instance, I could program this radio to receive everything using the old fashioned squelch system. And that would let this radio hear everybody. Um, it can be quite handy, actually, because what you can do, of course, if you give like a, a supervisor or a manager a radio that's got a channel that doesn't have the tone required for them to be able to hear, they can actually hear both of the conversations that are going on. So they'll hear all the key people. Um, the actual people doing the work will only hear the people who are using the right tone. So CTCSS is a great system. I figured one of the simplest things to do would be to actually let you listen to the tones. Now, the lowest tone is 67 hertz, so that's really way down. And the highest one is 250. And these tones get filtered out by your radio. So you don't actually hear the tones. But to be more accurate, um, they're not actually eliminated totally, they're just reduced down a long way. So I've set this one to 250. It's 250.3 actually. And that's the highest one of the CTCSS tones. And the radio has a harder job filtering that one out because it's starting to get into the realms of almost a very low voice. So at 250.3, generally you can hear the tone. So what I've done is I've arranged to record this. So I'll do it first without a tone and then I'll repeat it with the tone turned on. And then you should be able to notice what it is that your radio is using to cut out the people that you don't want to listen to. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. And a little bit of silence. Okay, I've now told this radio to use the 250.3 tone. So we'll do exactly the same test. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five. And here's a bit of silence where you hopefully can hear the tone. 
practically every radio now, from the real cheapies up to the expensive ones, are going to have CTCSS. Um, don't worry too much about it at all. The key feature is just making sure that you match the numbers. So if everybody's using 67 and you want to talk to them and hear them, then you enter 67 into your radio, the same frequency, and everything works fine. Um, there's loads of people who actually have problems with this. If you're using CTCSS, you must make sure the tones are matched or the system will do exactly what it's designed to do and stop people hearing things that are happening. That's the whole point. That explains, hopefully, what CTCSS tones are all about. If it's left you confused, just drop a little comment in the notes below and I'll try and reply to you if you like and I'll maybe explain a bit further. But uh, hopefully, get the transmit and receive frequencies right and add in the tone that applies to your particular little network or group and you're away. As simple as that. See you on the next video. Look after yourselves. Take care.